I was hoping I could say uh, it, it was due to your brilliance that I was permitted to have one of the most exciting experiences of my life. And intermittently for the next decade I was involved with you and your masterful array of cohorts in what has emerged to be one of the truly great and very original adventures of film. You, John, actually created the platform that has allowed for all the makeup sophistication of today. You sparked the imagination of an army of kids who are now the eminent and renowned of your field. I'm afraid that you have to settle for the reality that you are an icon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the only one doing it, you know. And uh, I says, go, go uh, like an eight. Want it directly like an eight? You want it half human? Do you want, what do you want? Yeah, that's what we want. You know, that, that kind of re reply. Do that, you know. And, and that happened about two weeks and I got mad, and I says, well, I'm going to do my own concept and stop telling me what I shouldn't do, you know. And then I says, see what happens. And that's how it went. And they were, they were, then they, they got confidence in me. First off, it was no confidence. But that's how, how we had done it. So that was into January, and concept, concept came in a month and a half or something, full concept. I mean, tries and failures, and uh, it was a matter of a few months, only a few months of all the the things we had. I created an assembly line. I had them working through the night a shift, putting rubber in the oven, eleven o'clock at night, taking it out in the morning. You know, no one ever did this before. See. And the biggest fear we had, I had, was will they laugh at me or accept me? I mean, the, what they I, I present as, as uh, apes at that time, and, and they looked pretty good, you know. But I thought if they laughed, this is going to be a Mickey Mouse. And no one left the theater, and they clapped. They got up and clapped, and I... Uh, with all the pressure that had been go uh, going on before, it alleviated it, you know, and I felt that it was going to be a fair picture, you know, never as good as I, I found out it turned into, you know. <laughs> uh, one thing I remember that, that John always taught me, which I have passed on, is don't keep any secrets. I have it. Uh, John told me one time, he said, the day that you can get better than me, bless you, go do it. And I've taken that same attitude with everybody that comes through uh, the studio with all of the new makeup artists and things. Anybody have any questions? Um, and I've, I've tried to encourage all of the wonderful talent that I have there working for me in the studio to be very open and free with all the knowledge they have because this is how we keep improving and keep building. 
and doing more with the business. But what they do today, uh, I, I, I feel so proud to see how these young men that a lot of them I've helped along the way, like you saw it here, but I feel proud that I had a hand in generating some of that things that they do, they are capable of doing today. All right, I've known all along, it says so in the first scroll. And Chambers took the clay and molded it. And then doth put in the plaster. And then from it came forth the false face. And that then has become the brothers and the sisters, the apes that you see before you now. Very well put, Dr. Sam. Well put. Thank you, John. It's all done with latex and sponges and whatnot. You've, You've done, done a lot throughout the years. You've, You've earned, earned the respect of all your peers. You've, You've inspired so many in their careers and allowed us apes to face our fears. He spoke. A oh, man, he spoke. <laughs> You've given us the encouragement to carry on. So we just have to say happy birthday and thanks, John. Behind every great ape, there is a great man. And that man is John Chambers. <laughs>